do you get them to practice? Is it does it practice the, the best solution or? Well, we have special ways of, of, of teaching them. Um, and I suppose the main point to make is that they really need to use actual materials, real materials, not pictures of things. Right. So here we use dice patterns quite a lot. Um, I've got a large dice here. Um, and here we've got a conventional dice. Um, but we, these would be real objects, um, or you could have pictures of the dice patterns. And so the child learns um, that, um, that four is four, but also four can be made of other numbers. Four can be made of two and two. Right. So they have lots of problems working out the whole number, and yet a whole number can also have parts within it. Right, and does that help with that numerosity idea? That, does that now have a fourness? Yes, <laughs> yeah. so they develop the concept of fourness by seeing the dice pattern, and then they won't have to count it in ones. And they begin to see why two and two is part of four. Right, oh, that's so interesting. Um, and also, we teach them that, that um, how do you, how does, what is the difference between four and five? And so by making the next dot pattern, which would be five, of course, mm. then the difference between four and five is one more. Yeah. And that's very visually explicit. And by working with these um, and making the patterns and remembering them themselves and talking about what they're doing, they begin to develop a toolkit to bring to the maths lesson. Right. This is it really before they get to the maths lesson. Yeah. And, and is this, would you say, a, a parent's... I think that parents can help that with. Well, I think parents could very much um, help by actually playing dice games. A little right. bit like um, it's said that parents don't go through nursery rhymes as, as much as they used to in the past. In the same way, perhaps in our busy society, we don't have time to play games anymore. So yeah. even snakes and ladders yeah. with throwing a dice. And so recognising the dice pattern and counting for a simple game like snakes and ladders. Um, could be immensely valuable. It, it does sound like um, dyscalculics have, have such a problem with the, the most fundamental concepts of maths. Have you, what's your experience of dyscalculics a little bit older, um, say in the secondary school and, and beyond? I mean, surely they must struggle unbelievably if they haven't been taught. Yes, well, hopefully many of them are taught um, ways of developing a concept of number before secondary school mm. um, and certainly here we work with primary school children but it is essential that they are given this specialist help and the government is looking into this with the um, Williams report on maths and they're beginning to think of ways of helping the bottom 5% of children and even within that 5% there will be some children with very serious mm. um, dyscalculic type difficulties which must be addressed in special ways. And can teachers um, who don't really understand maybe desk dyscalculia, can they, can they still help? by? The well, training courses are beginning to happen um, in some London boroughs and more and more people are becoming aware of dyscalculia's existence. Mm. So, but we are in the early days of, of understanding it and spreading the awareness about it. It sounds like a lot of people can't pronounce it <laughs> yet. Uh, one of the I always just say it uh, rhymes with peculiar, but right. of course dyscalculic children are not peculiar. Of course.